Hey Thieves, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me and today we are talking about essential oils and fragrance oils. So this is something I get a pretty good amount of questions about. What's the difference between an essential oil and a fragrance oil? When should I use what? Should I use fragrance oils? Those sorts of questions. So I thought I could have kind of a chat about them. So full disclosure, fragrance oils are not something I have worked with a lot. And a lot of that is because when I first got into this hobby, lifestyle, obsession thing. Fragrances were one of those things that my initial research really, really demonized. And I was very determined to be all natural. And I sort of started to realize that natural is a word that has no meaningful or useful definition just because it's such like a sliding scale. I wrote a whole blog about it. I'll link to it in the description box below. But yeah, this means that I have not worked with fragrance oils a lot. And it also means that I haven't done a lot of research on them up until now because I just sort of offhand dismiss them. And I mean, that's kind of willfully ignorant and not very cool. So I thought I would do some research. I would order some fragrance oils and we would look at them and we would talk about them and the difference between essential oils. So let's dive in. Essential oils are highly fragrant oil soluble liquids that are distilled, pressed, extracted directly from plant material. How oily that plant material is has a huge influence on the cost of the essential oil. So something like orange essential oil is usually reasonably inexpensive and you've probably actually sort of squirted yourself in the eye with orange essential oil while peeling an orange because citrus peels are pretty heavy and rich in citrus essential oil. Something like a rose, which I don't think many of us associate as being a particularly oily feeling flower, you need a lot more rose essential or rose petals to make rose essential oil. And that is why rose essential oil is several orders of magnitude more expensive than citrus essential oils. Despite the fact that they're called an essential oil, essential oils don't actually contain any lipids. So they aren't true oils. They don't contain any lipids in the way that an olive oil or coconut oil or sort of any type of carrier oil does. And because we source essential oils strictly from plants, that definitely gives us some limitations in what they can smell like because you can't get an essential oil from every plant. So most fruity things with the exception of citrus, you can't really get an, uh, an essential oil for anything that's sort of very food like. So if you get sort of like a, an apple cider or I don't know, like a lasagna, there's no such thing as lasagna essential oil. There's no such thing as like a, a tomato essential oil or a coconut essential oil. There are limitations. Now there are dozens, if not hundreds of essential oils available. So this isn't this huge limiting factor, but if you want something to smell like cotton candy, you're going to have an awful hard time doing that with essential oil because well, there are no cotton candy plantations out there where people go and pick cotton candy and then bring them into their beautiful distillery and distill you cotton candy essential oil, though. I don't know, I think if I worked on a farm, a cotton candy farm would be a pretty cool kind of farm to work on. <laughs> Something else essential oils have that fragrance oils don't have are aromatherapy benefits. So if you are looking for like a calming lavender, you're going to want to buy real lavender essential oil and not lavender fragrance oil. If you want the healing benefits uh, and the antiseptic benefits of tea tree oil, you're going to need to get the real thing. The synthesized product will smell probably almost identically like tea tree oil or like lavender, but it's not going to have those aromatherapy benefits. So that starts to be one of the things where you start to go, okay, well, the essential oils are, are more expensive, but you know, they have, they have some, some things, some benefits to them that fragrance oils don't have. Fragrance oils are assembled from a wide variety of highly fragrant chemicals in labs. Now these chemicals can be synthesized, they can be naturally occurring, or they can be synthesized, synthesized versions of naturally occurring aroma chemicals. So you can absolutely buy fragrance oils that contain aroma chemicals that are also found in essential oils. Fragrance oils can smell like pretty much anything. It's amazing. You can get fragrance oils that smell kind of like Chanel number no. five. You can get fragrance oils that smell like Mai Tais and pina coladas and sunscreen and days on the beach and clean laundry and apples and grapes and like 
everything, really. You can get a fragrance oil that smells like pretty much anything. So that's a huge strength of theirs, is that you have a massive array of scents to choose from. So if you are the kind of person who really loves the smell of like butterscotch or cotton candy, or even if you just really love the smell of roses, but $100 a teaspoon for rose essential oil is out of your budget, fragrance oils have got your back. And because fragrance oils don't require massive amounts of plant matter to assemble, they're significantly cheaper. I know at New Directions Aromatics, 100 milliliters of pretty much any fragrance oil will run you about five bucks. Five bucks does not get you a lot in terms of essential oils and very rarely would it get you 100 milliliters. So that's a definite bonus for fragrance oils. They are way cheaper. Another differentiating point of fragrance oils over essential oils is how long the smell lingers. So essential oils are quite volatile. If you've ever made soap with essential oils, you know this because you have probably made a log of soap, thought, oh goodness, that's like, that's way too strong. And then you slice it up and you leave it to age for a couple weeks and the scent fades hugely. Or if you've ever diffused essential oils in your home, you'll know that you can smell them while they're actively diffusing, but the scent doesn't really linger. Fragrance oils are pretty much the opposite of that. They last for ages. If you put fragrance oil in a shampoo bar, you will smell that shampoo bar in your hair until you wash your hair again. If you are diffusing fragrance oils in your home, I, I did about one drop in a diffuser. I smelt it for like three days. They're very, very strong. So in addition to being cheaper, they're a lot stronger, they last a lot longer, so that can also be a bonus. However, if you're scent sensitive, or you just don't like having the smell of like cotton candy, amber, musk, something, something, following you around for weeks, days, whatever, in your hair, or in your furniture, or just sort of like in the air of your home, fragrance oils might not be for you. But that is probably one of the biggest differentiating factors I've noticed. I learned the hard way that if you're making soap with fragrance oils, don't just take the like the beaker that you measure your fragrance oils out and just toss it in your dishwasher without giving it a really thorough hand washing first. I did that a while ago and my dishes and glasses tasted like jasmine sandalwood for weeks. It was gross. So yeah, don't do that. Fragrance oils last way, way, way longer than essential oils. So depending on where you sit with your enjoyment of the strength of fragrance and how long it hangs around, one of those things may appeal to you more than the other. It's really difficult to make blanket statements about essential oils and fragrance oils beyond what I've just said, which is basically essential oils are sourced from natural plant type things and fragrance oils are assembled in a lab and are synthetic or at least synthesized from naturally sourced ingredients. It's very difficult to make blanket statements beyond that because both essential oils and fragrant oils are made from a very wide array of highly fragrant chemicals. Yes, essential oils are completely made of chemicals. They are not chemical free at all. If you go to your supplier's website, if it's a reputable supplier, you can download the certificate of analysis. New Directions is great for this. And you can look and it'll break it down and tell you all the different fragrant compounds, fragrant, chemicals that make up your essential oil, which is really, really neat. These fragrant chemicals can and do often appear in fragrance oils. So it's hard to say fragrance oils are really dangerous and essential oils are completely safe when there's actually a pretty good amount of ingredient overlap and they are both made up of a whole lot of chemicals. So the EU has identified 26 of these fragrant aroma chemicals that are most likely to be allergens. True fragrance allergies are fairly rare. Most of the numbers I've read are sort of around 2%, but of course that doesn't take into account fragrance sensitivities. And if you have one of those, even if it's not a true allergy, it's really not an enjoyable thing. So I completely understand your desire to obviously avoid a sensitivity reaction. So these are the 26 compounds that the EU has identified as being potential allergens. And these are the ones that occur naturally. So you can see that 20 out of the 26 of these most likely to be allergic to chemical aroma compounds occur naturally in essential oils. If you find them in a fragrance oil, it may or may not be from a natural source. Most of these 
occurs naturally ones can also be synthesized. So you'll never really, really know, but they're chemically identical. And so if you have a sensitivity to linalool, you're going to have a sensitivity to it or an allergic reaction to it, regardless of whether or not it was sourced from lavender essential oil or synthesized in a lab. So the EU regulates that if you have any of these chemical compounds in your product above a certain concentration, and it does vary, it needs to be called out at the end of your ingredient list. So Lush is a really good place to go check this out. You go look at their ingredients list, and at the end of them, you'll generally have several of these compounds listed. It's hard to know exactly for sure because of how, how they are listed. They could be adding those as independent fragrant compounds, but it's much more likely that they're listing those because those chemical compounds occur naturally in the essential oils that they use because Lush does use a lot of essential oils in their product. So they're calling them out because they are potential allergens and they're fairly frequently allergens as far as all of the chemical compounds that we use for fragrance go. And yet they're sourced from essential oils. So the whole using essential oils is a great way to avoid allergic reactions to scents or scent sensitivity is just not, it's not true, unfortunately. It would be so easy if it was. One of the main concerns that people have about fragrance oils is that you don't 100% know what's in them. And this is true. If you have a reputable supplier, and again, New Directions is great for this, you can pull up their documentation and you can see a breakdown of the majority of the chemical compounds that are in your fragrance oil, but it's not gonna be all of them. Most of those names in that breakdown don't mean a whole lot to me. And I think unless you are a chemist, they're not gonna mean a whole lot to you either. So you can definitely set to Googling them, but there are thousands of approved aroma chemicals that can be used in fragrance oils. So the fragrance and perfumery industry is self-regulating. It's the IFRA, the International Fragrance Association, and they evaluate every single perfumery ingredient that is allowed to be used in perfumes and fragrance oils. They evaluate them for safety, for carcinogen risk, and you can go look these things up and read about them yourself if you're interested in them. But of course, you, you won't always 100% know every single chemical compound that's in a fragrance oil that you use. So it does partially come down to how much trust you put in the IFRA and their self-regulating abilities. Do you trust that they are doing good science and rigorously inspecting all of their ingredients before approving them? I'm inclined to believe them because they don't want a bunch of people having horrendous reactions to their products. But I do know that quite a few people are suspicious of that sort of thing, especially when it is a little bit blind, right? You can't look at the ingredients list on a bottle of fragrance oil, figure out every single chemical compound that's in there, and then go research every single one. So. so how do you know if the product that you're looking at uses fragrance or essential oils? This one can be a bit tricky. The FDA allows the word fragrance to be used for really anything that's added to a product for scent. Health Canada uses the term parfum. Essential oils can live under that term. Scent blends are often considered trade secrets and so you're not necessarily forced to divulge them. I know that when I make products, I'm very happy to brag about the fact that I use true essential oils and so I will absolutely list those on the ingredient label but you don't have to. You can absolutely just say fragrance and that could be a synthesized fragrance or it could be a blend of essential oils. So if you really wanna know, I would recommend asking the person or the company that made the product because that's gonna be your best way to get an actual answer for that because unfortunately the labels just really aren't that helpful. Well, where does all of this leave us? I don't really know. I don't intend to stop working with essential oils. I love them. I have tons of them. I have so much fun blending them up and putting them in things and learning about them, learning about their, you know, their properties or antimicrobial properties and antibacterial properties and their aromatherapy properties. And they're super neat. I really like working with essential oils, but I'm also not convinced that fragrance oils are completely evil either. In the sort of limited time I have been fiddling around with fragrance oils, I've found that I don't really love them in leave on products, but that's mostly because I guess I kind of like my hair to smell like hair and not like, peaches and valentines. So 
I might just feel a little bit weird that way. If you like your hair to smell like peaches and valentines, fragrance oils are definitely for you. But yeah, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I don't have any really strong conclusions from this. So I guess what this kind of comes down to is basically do whatever you want. Continue your own research. I don't recommend the EWG Skin Deep database as a great place to do your research on this because they kind of just have a page that says like fragrance and then with this great big red number that makes all fragrance seem like it's all the same thing and that it's all really, really dangerous and scary and carcinogenic. But as we've discussed, fragrance oils are made up of tons and tons of different things, just like essential oils are. So it's really, really hard to just make a blanket statement and say fragrance is evil. So I will link to some sort of better resources in the description box below that you can kind of go look at and research and actually look at these individual chemical compounds and learn about them. Because really in the end, all I want you to be doing is making informed decisions and having fun. That's why we make our own skincare products, right? So yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful and not too horrendously rambly. And I will see you next time.